Hey guys, what's going on? So the Sony hacks are going into the next round and now everything starts to get really, really interesting. As I said in my previous video, I am majorly skeptical whether North Korea is actually behind the hacks. If you look into the public opinion everywhere, it is now communicated that obviously North Korea is behind it because apparently everything was about the interview, right? That movie that, by the way, now has been released, I think in, a, in around uh, 200 cinemas across the US. You can stream it on the internet. So if North Korea really would have want this movie, you know, stop this movie from coming out, then they kind of achieved the opposite because it was absolutely the best promotion for any movie in the last 20 years, probably. However, there is an amazing article that I read by Mark Rogers on the Daily Beast, and he is highlighting a few very, very interesting facts that I want to break down for you guys in this video. I'll link the article down in the description in case you're interested in reading the full article. It's definitely worth reading. So what Mark Rogers says that in the FBI press release, the FBI, and I'm quoting here, the FBI has now enough information to conclude that the North Korean government is responsible for these actions. Then they continue and talk about that they can't share all the information they have uh, because they have to protect their sources. So we kind of have to trust them with this. So what what did they tell us, right? What What's the interesting fact and the conclusive information that leads them to think that North Korea is behind? this first one is that the malware found in sony system after the hacks bears strong similarities to malware found in other attacks attributed to north korea before so even just the wording of this it bears strong similarities it's not the same it just has similarities to me this is not really plausible evidence right this is like the, the malware that they found is called shamoon uh, that's what's described in that article. And this is like a piece of malware that has been leaked a while ago. It's publicly available. Anyone who wants to use it to hack into systems can use it. So something that is widely available like this piece of malware does not really link to North Korea in any way. So this is a really flimsy piece of evidence from the FBI. Uh, the second piece of evidence that they put forward is even more flimsy. And I'm quoting here, let me read this out to you guys. The FBI also observed significant overlap between the infrastructure used in this attack and other malicious cyber activity the US government has previously linked directly to North Korea. For example, the FBI discovered that several internet protocol addresses associated with known North Korea infrastructure communicated with IP addresses that were hard coded into the data deletion malware used in this attack. So basically what they're saying is that some of the IP addresses that they found in Sony Pictures network after it was hacked had previously been used by North Korea in other cyber attacks. So that doesn't really make a lot of sense because IP addresses are really not permanent. Some of them might be, but not all of them are. To link one particular IP address to a cyber crime is not exactly something that really makes sense. Instead, they really should look at the servers and the services that were used in the hack. So let's look at these proxies, the list of proxies. That are, these are at least the ones we know. There were definitely more, but these are the ones that the FBI have released. So you can see there's one in Thailand, Poland, there's one in Italy, Bolivia, Singapore, Cyprus, and the US. Now, the Daily Beast has run like IP reputation services over these IPs, and they reveal that all but one of these have been used in other malware activities in the past. Also, there is no sign of North Koreans. It's just apparently a lot of very commonly used cybercrime proxies. So this is all that the FBI has put forward in terms of evidence. And to be honest, I think if they would have really hard evidence that goes beyond that, they would definitely put it forward because it would give them the security of, of saying, you know, it was definitely North Korea. However, they don't. So let's assume just for a second that North Korea is not behind the attacks. Where does that leave us and which kind of points does that rise? The interview, the movie that this apparently is all about, wasn't linked to the hacks from the beginning. It was not that Sony picture servers got hacked and immediately the hackers came forward on some anonymous board and said, this is all about the interview. It was only assumed after the hacks that it might be linked and then suddenly it was linked. Uh, if you trace it back, that's actually how it happened. So that is a bit suspicious. 
Second thing is that all the content that was leaked was dumped afterwards. It was just dumped and released to the public, to newspapers. So ask yourself the question, would North Korea do something like this? If you would get your hands on that much sensitive information, would you not rather keep it and evaluate it and make sense of it? This whole thing looks much more as if they really want to embarrass Sony. Now, the point that kind of hits me personally the most is that blaming North Korea is really, really convenient for the FBI and for the US administration. It looks like the perfect excuse to push through whatever new strong cyber laws they feel are appropriate. A potential threat like this just gives you a free ticket to do whatever you want in terms of, in this case, cyber laws. So that is really something that strikes me a bit. It's not really 100% clear that North Korea really has benefited from these attacks. Also, looking at the malware that was left behind in the system, the hackers had to have extensive knowledge of Sony's internal architecture and access to their passwords. Of course, that is something that North Korea could have bought, right? They could have bought this information, but it's just the complexity and the IT knowledge that is required to pull off such an enormous hack. And I would nearly say it was like the biggest hack that I've ever seen, just in terms of the content. I mean, after Edward Snowden, probably, but in terms of the complexity and the amount of data they pulled out of there. So it is possible that they did buy this information from someone. But to be honest, to me personally, and we're kind of getting into like, conspiracy theory territory here it looks very much like a false flag operation or like i said in my previous video maybe it's a disgruntled employee who got fired and he's really angry and whether he sold the passwords in the login or whether he did it himself who knows the details of this but just looking at who benefits from this whole operation it's definitely not north korea another really interesting point on this whole conflict is actually for me at least and maybe you can give me other examples in the comment section below it's the first time that i hear about a country hacking into a corporation and then because this corporation gets attacked two countries get into a conflict right that's quite weird like it's it's kind of an overlap between a corporate conflict and an international conflict. And Sony is not even an American company. I mean, I know that Sony Pictures Entertainment is a subsidiary company of Sony, so it is an American-based company and they distribute mostly American movies. But nonetheless, Sony, the head corporation, is a Japanese company. So this whole thing smells a little bit fishy. But I think on the evidence that I just talked about and that was presented, it, to me, it just doesn't feel like it's enough there to blame it on a country like North Korea. And let me just make it crystal clear at this point, I'm not pro North Korea. I don't want to defend their system. I hate their ideology and everything that happens in their country as much as you do. I think it's really horrible. It conflicts with every basic human right that I support. But when it comes to a conflict like this, I think each one of us has to kind of take a step back and nearly look at the conflict from an outside perspective without judging people or countries countries or anyone with our preconceived opinions. Also, I'm not saying that it's definitely not them. It's an option. It's not out of this world that they might be behind it. But to me, it looks very much as if something else is behind it. Anyway, guys, I just wanted to share these thoughts with you. Again, this video is very much based on the article on the Daily Beast by Mark Rogers. I'll put that link down in the description. However, I found it interesting enough and like important enough to share these facts with you guys. So I hope you enjoyed the video. You can leave me a like if you did. Please subscribe to my channel for more. Normally, I don't get that political. I don't even know why I do that right now. But I certainly enjoy making these videos and I find the whole story around the Sony hack just very fascinating. So I hope you do too. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks guys for watching and I see you guys next time. I'm out. Bye.